This is our first look into how linear algebra and finding eigenstates for your eigenvalues and eigenvectors is done. This problem states that for a Hamiltonian of a certain three-level system is represented by the matrix H, which is equal to A, 0, B, 0, C, 0, B, 0, A. So it's kind of symmetric. Be aware of that fact. And where A, B, C are all real positive, I, no, they're just real numbers, so positive is not a condition. Um, and then what we want is for two parts. If the system starts out in the state S0 for A, with the state being 0, 1, 0, uh, and we want to find what is S, so some time evolution, we want to find S of T for S of A being this state and S of B being this state. So we're going to have to first do a little bit of math to figure out what possible states these could be. And so let's see how that's done. Okay, so the fact that our Hamiltonian is a matrix tells us that we need to find the eigenvalues and thus the eigenvectors that go. So what are the allowed, um, for this Hamiltonian, what are the allowed eigenstates? Just like we had to for the infinite square well, what were the allowed states? That's what we're aiming for. Um, so here then, if we know that we have to find the eigenvalues, we need to apply the eigenvalue characteristic equation, which is the determinant of the lambda, which is the eigenvalue, times i, the identity matrix, minus the a, all that has to equal zero. Um, sometimes books will switch this where we have the matrix minus the eigenvalue times the identity. It doesn't really matter. You could factor out negatives and it become the same thing. Uh, just be aware, whatever definition works for the book you're in, I'm using one out of a linear algebra book, and, uh, you know, that's the one I've used throughout all classes, and I work just fine. So, nonetheless, what we have here is that the eigenvalue in purple needs to be uh, multiplied to the uh, identity matrix, which is just ones on the main diagonal, and we need to do this in order to form match the dimensions, our uh, Hamiltonian was a three level matrix, so we know we have to have a three by three. And so here, when we do the subtraction, we get the eigenvalue. In the context of this question, those are the energy values. So we have E minus the first entry, E minus the middle entry, and then E minus the last entry. The main diagonal, because that's what the I puts the eigenvalues to. And we just minus from the H given. Now, there's several ways to uh, solve this determinant. Uh, cofactor expansion is the way we go, and I'm purposely trying to highlight that I'm expanding about the first row, and that uh, is what we normally do for things like cross product determinants, expand about the first row. We have a plus minus plus structure there, so if you don't know how to do a determinant, message or uh, comment and we could figure that out. What I want to highlight here is that uh, the zero Whatever we find out is our cofactor is all multiplied by zero, so that saves us a lot of headache. So we're really just worried about this cofactor and this cofactor. So if we cover up this row and this column, we have EC uh, times EA minus zero times zero. So we have two factors of EA. That's why we have an e, e minus A squared there. And then we have a zero cofactor, and then we have a B here. Cover this row or this row and this column. We get zero times zero, and then B and then minus b times this, so that's where we're going to b squared. And we just set this equal to zero, because that's what our characteristic equation is, and we solve down. Here, both of them have an e minus c, so we factor that out, no big deal. Factor by grouping, easy enough. This leads us to two cases, either e minus c equals zero, or this bracket equals zero. And when we do this, we get e equals c, pretty easy. And then we get e minus a squared equals b squared take the square root, plus or minus, of course. And so we can finally go ahead and finalize our eigenvalue summary um, by stating both of the cases for the plus or minus. So in summary, our eigenvalues are E1 equals C, E2 equals A plus B, and E3 equals A minus B. Now, the eigenvalues are the easy part. We don't have any multiplicities and you know we don't have anything too dramatic to deal with uh we'll see soon that uh, when we find the eigenvectors we have case of uh, degeneracy which is not allowed at least for what we need so i'll highlight that when we get there but 
we have to realize that each of these eigenvalues is also coupled with an eigenvector. So if we go back to our Hamiltonian equation, or, or rather our yeah, Hamiltonian equation or eigen equation, whatever you want to call it, H acting on some state N is equal to EN with the N pairing. So we need to match what the EN is for the SN and we need to find the SN via the characteristic equation, which is what we have here. Um, so if we let this state vector S sub N equal alpha, beta, gamma, and this is a zero vector, so it's a column of zeros. Here we have the same setup that we did in the uh, determinant, but now we're not taking the determinant. We have a system of equations that we need to solve. And so the general case is En minus A, En minus C, En minus A, still on the main diagonal, and we have to sub in each one of these cases. So for our first case where E1 equals C, we plug a C in, we see that C minus C goes to zero here, so we get a whole row of zeros, which we'll see how to deal with. And then we get C minus A here. Note that with this, we're going to have to be very careful due to the fact that a row of zeros and the symmetric nature of this matrix will give us some weird eigen uh, vectors. Okay, so now, you know, I, again, I don't know what level of linear algebra everyone has. If we need help, we can get help, but I think it's easiest to evaluate this during row ops and just manually manipulating equations. So by a row op, I mean multiply row one by B, a factor of B, and then we want to take this and minus it from multiplying row three by a factor of C minus A, and then we want to send that to the new row three. Okay, so some multiple times R1 minus some multiple times R3 leads to the new R3. So we do this because we're trying to cancel out this zero here and we get B squared minus uh, the parentheses C minus A squared. We do this so for the fact that we have Gaussian elimination, we can go all the way up to the reduced row echelon form, a whole bunch of weird, th a whole bunch of weird words that we're just trying to show we're reducing the matrix so we don't have to substitute in as much. Uh, you know, matrix multiplication tells us that this last row multiplied into this column vector gives us uh, zero times alpha, zero times beta. So we have this constant of numbers times gamma. And we know that that equals zero because our third component equals zero. But when we set this up in our cases, either the B minus or the B equals C minus A squared or gamma equals zero. But we know that from the other eigenvalues that B squared is equal to the, the uh, combination of C minus A squared. We know that these are already other eigenstates, so this is a degenerate solution and we can't have that. So here, this showcases that gamma has to be zero and that's what we have in red. With this, now we look at the first row. If we multiply a row to column, we get C minus A times alpha, zero times beta, and then we get B times gamma. But we just showed that gamma had to equal zero, so now we can identify what alpha needs to be. Again, if we set up our cases for the fact that we're zero on the right-hand side, we get C equals A, but that's also a degenerate solution, or alpha equals zero. And clearly, since we don't want degenerate answers here, we want uh, alpha equals zero. This tells us that we're going to have to have a free variable for beta because we could not eliminate we could not eliminate beta because this whole row was zero. So with now that we have to do that, let's go ahead and see how we write this up. So uh, because of that row of zeros, we don't have enough information. So we say let beta equal t, which is a free variable or you know extra parameter. There's a lot of words used in certain text, but we could be any such number, and it will hold for all of them. The reason why it doesn't matter is um, because when we go to form the vector for one, n equals one, we get zero t zero, but we need to normalize these because of the quantum mechanic restrictions that we need to have normalized states. So, uh, you know, we normalize it with the norm of S1. Again, if you're not comfortable with the notation, we just take each component, square it, and then add them together. We see that the normalization factor is t, so whenever I divide this vector by the norm, I get the normalized version. So I get I divide every uh, element here by t, and that's why it doesn't matter when I let beta equal a free variable. 
So that being said, in conclusion, for eigenvalue 1, we get eigenvector 1, which is normalized. And so now that we've kind of seen that, let's go ahead and try to speed up this process. We have eigenvalues E2 is equal to A plus B. Go ahead, plug that into the same form. You see that A's cancel this time. We have a middle component finally, and A's cancel there. So here, again, let's use our row ops. So I want R1 minus R3 is the new R3, because I'm trying to get rid of this component, and that's why I have it in red. But in trying to get rid of that, I also get rid of this component here, also in red. So what do you know? We're going to have to have free variables somewhere. So the middle row tells us that we have 0 times alpha, A plus B minus C times beta, and 0 times gamma equals 0 uh, for the middle row. And so what we're really stuck with is alpha a plus b minus c times beta equals zero. Again, if we set up this case here, we see we have degeneracy with the fact that we had other eigenvalues. So not going to work. So beta has to equal zero. And so that gives us one thing. And now our first row tells us we have b times alpha a times b, or zero times beta and then b times gamma. So now we have two variables that are free. So let's see how we deal with that. Clearly, if I minus it over, since one side is equal to zero, I can cancel my factors of B, and I get the relationship that alpha is equal to negative gamma. But again, this just means that we have a free parameter because one row is full of zeros. We don't have enough information. So if we let alpha equal T, then gamma equals negative T. You could set this up the other way too. It doesn't really matter. But with that being said, you know, if we plug A or alpha for T, gamma for T, negative T, and beta for zero, this is our second. But again, we need to normalize this. So this is where we see that root two coming in quantum mechanics all the time. Very, very, very uh, readily uh, seen. This is where they get it because you now have two components. So add them up. And then again, with that, we can divide out each component by T. And so for the eigens vec or eigenvalue of E2, this is our uh, congruent or uh, whatever consequential eigenvector so we have one zero negative one be aware of that that'll be useful soon and finally for our last one we just put in e3 which is a minus b so we have a minus b term instead of a plus b and so we just add these together we get rid of the last row again and so instead of plus b we have minus b like i said last row is zero again same process degenerate state because a, a plus or minus b uh, and then so we get beta equals zero again. First row, same thing, but the minus B allows us to set the free parameters equal to T and T. And so we have both positive this time. So we have plus T plus T. And again, just like last time, we see that our norm is root two T. Here's the work if you need it. So divide everything by uh, root two and T. We see that we get a, a uh, final uh, summary here of the eigenvalue e3 e for a minus b yields the eigenvector uh, we can handle that not too bad we see that we get one zero one we like that now what's great about this setup is that we can quickly see that in part a the given initial state is just the initial state of s1 so we know the particular energy state or the eigenstate and hence the I, and hence the energy Meaning that because here I have the same vector of 0, 1, 0 for the initial condition, S A of 0, I know that I am in eigenstate N equals 1. So I can have E1 here, which we're just, you know, time component is the same as separation of variables, works out well. So we just plug in for E1, we equal C. For the state vector 1, we have 0, 1, 0, and pretty, pretty easy there. We like that. That's the benefit of the setup. The other thing to notice is that in the case of B, we know in quantum mechanics we can have linear combinations, and that's what we have in the case of B. Let's check that out. All right, so we're almost done, almost done. Hang in there. Here we see that we're going to have to manipulate this uh, form that we were given from S uh, sub B for zero, because we know that we're one, zero, zero, but we know that we have a plus one and a minus one that could cancel out. 
So let's go ahead and multiply by 2 over 2 just to get a 2 in the uh, first element here. And we notice that 0 is in the last element. So we can get 1 plus 1. That gives us our 2 back. But we also know that 0 is 1 minus 1. And so I could split up these two, uh, two column uh, vectors. And I have vector 1, vector 2. Which, if you recall, when I had 1, 0, 1, that gave me a state vector of S3. But because of the normalization, I have to shove over the root 2, as we see there. But also recall that when I had 1, 0, negative 1, I had the uh, vector 2. So plug those in, and now you see what we have for the energy states. And if we wish to, you know, now that we have this in the case here, if we go back and substitute in what these vectors are actually defined as, we have an extra factor of 1 over root 2 with the eigenvalues. We could simplify this down into a couple more steps, which is what uh, we'll see next. So with this, we see that we have a factor of e to the negative i a t h bar from both of them. So we can take it out. We also have a 1 over root 2 from resubstitution, so that cancels that. And now you see that we can just add these vectors across with the new eigenvalue plugged in. So B and B, uh, purple and green, easy enough. Send them through, use Euler's identity, and we, can, and we uh, condense here. Note that if we were to switch the order in the characteristic equation, we would just have to uh, set the Bs to opposite uh, signs. So this B would be negative, this B would be negative. And so cosine being even doesn't matter. Sign being odd, you just have a negative out front. So, oh, so that's what I mean by it doesn't matter which definition you use. Just be careful with what's given. But the same process is yielded. So with that, I will see you on the next one. Thank you for watching. And until next time, stay curious and happy learning.